Mike! Oh, told you, shuns <laughs> told, told you so. He can pull it out whenever he, he can, wants, baby. He, he has the card. Yes. You can pull the Nidalee card whenever you want if you are Shun, and it's with the Renekton, okay? The was, best card. You see it marked with a spear. The three man invade coming out from BLG. Crash down. Not going to find anything He's other fight. than the red buff. Now they're backing away. Red buff still at about 1,000 HP. Owner taking some damage, gets ignited, has to continue falling back. Shun still trying to find a little bit of poke oh. here. They engage. Oh, nicely catching Owner up, but now Shun's going to back away. Owner with a flash out, trying to stay alive, but now Elk is under pressure, down to 100 <laughs> HP. They're nearly going to kill him. It's first blood back over to T1. The invade crashes and burns. Now Shun has to try to get away. The flash is already down. Can he escape the power of the Kench? He's been hit with the lick, the flash of the wall. How how many licks to the center of a Nidalee pop? It's only going to take one more. Shun falls. Carrier grabs the second kill of the game for T1. And secure the second crab. Bit of an oh. engage. There comes the abyssal dive, but now the counter attack with the crash. Oh. Down. The spear goes wide. Gumiyushi gets away, and now another counter play coming out from Owner. But Carrier is killed instead. BLG are on the play. It's a party. It's a party up here in the top side river. The Herald, not going to be taken down just yet. They're going to smite it away. Owner picks up the eyeball. Everybody came to the party, but now we're all leaving to go do our homework. Karia finds a tongue lash onto Yagao. No more follow-up here just yet. Nice root coming out from Guma Yushi. Now they're going to go in. There's the Wombo combo. T1 ain't going to kill anybody just yet. Yagao barely gets away. Owner's ready to swoop in for the Cataclysm. And on gets turned off. Guma Yushi flips the switch. And now Shun tries to fire back. Leading alongside Faker, they are identical right now. And he's only at 13 CS. The Senna doing wonders for T1. Yeah. Total damage. Zay is topping those charts, but it's pretty easy to do when you're Nara against the melee. Flashing forward. Mega Nara in the wall. Wallop. Rock toss. One more hit. will do it. Zay is. Solo kills like this. Um, when you're winning team fights, think. Well, there you go. There it is. Revealed. Uh, yes. Easy setup for them. And. Uh, Coming into this series, they are looking strong. Their early game is looking good, but BLG are known for their team fighting. They are building. Collect another objective, simultaneously taking the Rift Herald and mid lane. Just beautiful stuff. Yes. All right, keep your eyes on On. That Rel Engage would need to be absolutely nasty to win a 5k deficit team fight. It's are going to be pretty intense once the Herald Here has comes its the way hammer. with the turret. There it goes. Yep, just immediately smashes that thing down. Three to zero. power spikes, but also it doesn't get better for you if you wait. But there's a pick! Zeus getting jumped on. They're throwing the kitchen sink at him. Beautiful shutdown from BLG. One split push in. Whoa, never mind. Whoa. BLG fight now. Shun just goes over the wall, and I'm pretty sure he doesn't want to be there anymore. Flash back away just to escape. From All right, they're going to be able to push at least half of it. BLG, this is the moment. All right, TP coming in. They want to try to stop this, find a punish. Knock up on two, coming out from owner. Guma Yushi looking to disengage back up towards the top side of the jungle. TP coming in now. T1 regrouping. Low health bars on BLG. Zeus is taking towers right now. Zeus did not join. T1 said, we're fine without you, buddy. All right, pin is low. Still lots of free firing damage coming out from Gumayushi. Remember, there was no ulti available for Alka. On goes in, finding a magnet storm onto three, but he ain't gonna find any kills just yet. On is gonna die first. They take out the jungler second. Ben ain't gonna get it. Shun is down. T1, run them over. The range is lethal from T1. Four versus five, BLG just can't even get close to T1. And when they finally do, Carrier devours his mid laner and brings him back into the fight to wreak havoc. Carrier, he's oh, not done. Oh no, he even stops Bin's recall. If he gets this croc here, there it is. Abyssal dive takes him out. And right, let's see how long this base can stand. Top lane tier three turret is already down. So there's an open inhib available if T1 just want to rush it. They still got this power play for Baron from another minute and 40 seconds. The minions will do enough work under the inhibitor here in the top side themselves. Zay is about ready to transform. Magnet Storm was used for a whole lot of nothing. Owner's got Yagao locked down, but Owner's going to drop instead. They'll trade him back for the mid laner, and Shun falls too. Now it's two inhibitors down and a 4v3 for T1. The souls are all over the place, but they're the souls of BLG. G players as T1 is not stopping here. Elk may have been the one to take out Owner, but now the push just keeps going. Zayas will grab another on Bin as Elk has the killer instinct right back into his own fountain. He flashes away just to live. <laughs> T1 just stomp BLG in game one.
Gary is having fun too. Oh, he is. <laughs> it's arcane all over again. We're about to get a sneak peek at season two. What do you mean, man? Right she was now. the main character of that show. How can the main character not have fun? Okay, it's, Tom Kenge is a good answer. Yeah. It is also pretty good. We talked about the gank setup early on. Faker has no idea. Shouldn't coming around. There's the stun. Scatter the weak. Faker tries to flash, but you go. It's actually the, what cements the kill as uh, Jun is able to flash after and provide that damage. Been getting kind of low, but I don't think he's too worried right now. Keeping my eyes on the minimap as well as to the presence of the junglers. Owner pathing away as he moves towards his wolf camp. Bin? No. <laughs> no. Is that, this saying don't? That does oh, he is! Have. Oh, it does! Oh. Zeus went back in thinking he might find an outplay, and Bin just beats him on the head with a <laughs> stick. Uh-oh, no flash Faker! Faker! Doesn't get hit by the scat of the week, but it doesn't even matter. The Unleashed Power should be enough. Faker's just buying some time. Beautiful from BLG. They don't have it, and it's going to be a knock-on effect. Dominoes here will start to fall. Shun picks up the Dragon as well. And Ask. But the Jack's still so strong, man. Hang on. Such an iconic pick here for Pin, and he's not afraid to use it. Zeus gets killed again. He's just scrapping up here in the top side. As now we are going to see a TP coming in, but it's from Yagao, who just picked up the Leandries. Owner's going to lose the opportunity for his combo, and the Dragon's going over to T1. But what about the fight? On trying to get away. Guma wants to get excited. Beautiful engage on the Yagao. T1 may lose their jungler, but they're going to get three, and a Drake back for it. It only takes... Still the top lane for them. If you're looking at what's going on up there, Bin could be a serious issue. And if you're BLG, that's something you know you can play around as the game goes forward. Oh, it's going to be caught by Shockwave. He could not live through it. And they immediately concede another pick. And you can see now that, like, they've kind of lost that control. It's not over yet. Oh, nice catch. BLG, more money on Yagao. Unleashed power that likely would have killed him otherwise. I see a lot of pings, uh, blue pings here, up towards Faker. So they're sending a uh, contingent they are winning the side lanes. Bin had an advantage, and Yagao had an advantage. But their AD carry, they are they are outgunned. Well, can he oh, do enough? Does the nice. wave clear? Yeah. Um, but they're outgunned, so they didn't want to take the 5 on 5 versus Gumayushi, who had a, a BF sword to the long sword previously. Now we just had a recall for Elk, and Elk is able to go even up the inventory, but it's at the in, cost though, of your tempo. To uh, the tier two. Bring around Bin, looking for a potential play, maybe a dive, but no, it looks like with the wave clip from Zeus, flash. Oh, owner just flashing in, looking for the damage here onto Elk. Nearly finds him, Super Mega Down the Rock, oh. gonna get it, but the flag will be planted on the court. And that's gonna be the tower on it, at, on top of it. This is, this is supreme control Even from game. T1. He got his ultimate and half health him, but now he's he's behind them with a big flank. He's looking for the flank. Beautiful two-man stun. Gumiyushi gets hit by it. On's coming around from the side. Guma's got to be careful, but Shun flashes back over the wall off to the left, keeping himself alive as Elk is trapped in the Cataclysm here yet again. The feathers fly. Owner tries to stay alive. A dunk from the Super Mega Death Rocket. A double kill of a Gumiyushi. He's excited, and he just can't fight it. T1 are turning this game on its head. So I feel like that they actually have answers to mitigate this split push. And this is where I start to get concerned for BLG right now. They're taking what objectives on the map they can. Have you <laughs> seen the mountain goats up on those <laughs> tiny <laughs> cliffs? Like, it is crazy. Uh, right, oh, they got oh. They're trying to catch owner this time, but instead it's on. And Gumiyoshi's unstoppable. They found Yagao. Shut down for fate. Miracle, but they're sending Zeus right for him. The two bouncers here, Caria and Zeus, going to make sure he's oh. getting nowhere near that thing. He's not getting nope. an opportunity to even try. Oh, but they got it with the tongue lash. Oh. Elk has to flash over the wall. Elk with a potential massive outplay, and Zeus goes into the stasis, but he keeps himself alive. Gumiyoshi is dominating, and Ben will not find the stun here with a counter strike. The answer from all of T1 is yes. Faker with his crown shattered. Okay, owner with the engage, forcing the flash out of Yagao. Beautiful flag and drag right back out over the wall. Bin gonna be the target now as on looks to try to provide some disruption. Shun back over with the ball breaker, but he ain't gonna find a whole lot. Re-engage from owner. Stop watch to stop them in their tracks. Oh my goodness, it's T1! Just absolutely rolling over him. Double kill for Guma, triple kill for Guma. Owner picks up another. Ben's the last man left alive, and he's gonna walk home with a broken leg. 
T1 absolutely dominating. T1 barely walk away with a scratch. The damage is completely mitigated. Stopwatches, devour. Karia didn't even use his devour in the fight. I mean, Goomba, Goomba flash forward for a dead person to try and get a Quatra kill. It was crazy. Just a <laughs> one-sided fight from T1. We talked about how they've been ramping up forward. The front line for T1. Oh, hang on. Back in the action. Back in the action yet again. Shun trying to get away. Super Mega Death Rocket not going to find the target, but Gumi Yushi finds the kill on Elk instead, and they'll happily take that. Bin trying to disengage with the lead strike back to his jungler, but now he's going to be thrown up in the air by Owner again. Again, shut down over to Guma Yushi. T1 may have just won the game. Another convincing fight for T1. BLG just, they, they have no options in the fight. T1 are just consistently getting the better of them. Shun is forced to retreat. The TP now coming in from both Zayus and Faker. T1 are ready to end it here. The early game was tough. The top lane was rough. And for BLG, it was not enough. T1, the greatest team ever in League of Legends, is ready to bring it back and do it again. They're on the Nexus, and they're on their way to the quarterfinals. A bit natural reaction to be like, where the hell are these guys actually in the standings? And now going up against BLG, ah. I see. They're, they're <laughs> up there. They're definitely up there. They are up there indeed. All right, now with everything said and done, the dust settled for today, we're going to toss it back over to the world's cooldown. Thank you so much. The dust has not quite settled because we have a draw a show day. coming up. Ooh. And I'm scared. Uh, but T1, though, they don't want to take that risk. They want to go straight to the quarterfinals. Now, we've still got Dukla here, and he was actually not able to watch a lot of that game, so I'm going to ask him a question. You're <laughs> a Jax, and you're up versus a Gragas. Okay. And you solo kill him, and after that, you just kill him a whole bunch of times, and you've basically got the lane kingdom. What do you think happens in the rest of the game? Uh, you lose because top lane doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's right, Maurits. That's what happens. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of shocked. I, I, coming into the day, I did favor T1 because I uh, think that we've seen the blue side thus far be more favorable. I also think that T1 just always naturally scales well into worlds. And the previous game reminded me very much of the first game that uh, NRG, you guys actually played, where you have a really clear plan and it works out well. The second game, though, I'm baffled because we did not see T1 team fight this well for, in my opinion, the entirety of summer. But what I will also say is for most of summer, they were picking hard winning lanes and trying to just outskill yes. their opponent 24-7. I know. This was actually a team fight comp. Yeah. You just yeah, but they didn't up. do that. But they team fought really well with the yeah, team I fight I know comp. they can, but they didn't do that, Jack. I'm telling fights. you. Are you disappointed that they started off badly? No, I, I, I mean, obviously, I, I would. Uh, no, nah, because he's playing against one of the best tops in the tournament. Yeah. He made a mistake, and then against a player like Bin, you don't get to do that. But the coordination of this team was something that in summer, even before Faker's injury, just it wasn't that good, mm -hmm. right? Like they won just off of hand stiffing people, and then I'm looking at this, and the front to back is, is really, really consistent. Man. What I'm day. actually impressed at how they, I how they like, evolved. I feel like both underdogs won today. I, I, Dokla may, you know, contest that they would have been favored in the G2 <laughs> game. But yeah, I was I was a little worried for T1 here. I know they have so much fan support, but the history of Worlds in Korea, T1 actually hasn't appeared. They've missed Worlds the two previous years it's been in Korea. Uh, when it was in Korea in 2018 was actually Korea's worst year ever. Yeah. So with this much fan support, sometimes that can just add pressure. But I feel like they really leaned into it and played at an extremely high level today. Yeah, Faker's being talked to on stage. We're also going to talk to T1, but it's going to be post-draw, uh, I believe. Because, wait, I think tomorrow we're actually drawing for the bracket stage. So they wouldn't actually be affected yeah, yeah. this time T1 wouldn't be around. in the draw, but no. BLG's going to be in the draw. Is because all those be two and two draw. teams. But just like we should have known, uh, I know they changed it from groups to Swiss stage this year, but T1 had never lost more than one game in any world's group. Iteration. And they had already lost the one. Imagine having those So stats. they have to 2-0. <laughs> it's the right. only way. Yeah, can you imagine this type of world success? Can you imagine being so lucky. Yeah. And then also to have never. this, to have this like 2019, 2021, 2022, and be like, yeah, T1's really underperformed yeah. their expectations. It's crazy. Like if they how don't high? Win. 
How high are their expectations? Tell me about it. My goodness. Say, Moritz, uh, you were singing Carrier's Praises. Do you want to continue that? Yeah, because because we really got to. Because I think that this is also something that I, I really wouldn't expect from T1, which is they are at the forefront of a positive meta development. They've been at the lot uh, at the forefront of a lot of them. Uh, you know, Jin Yumi's and and, and uh, <laughs> the Caitlyn's, yeah, the, 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 the Callista. Yeah, yeah. They, they haven't always worked out. But specifically, his Carrier or Carrier's Kench, <laughs> sorry, um, has been to me the most impressive Kench that we have in the LCK and. We have been having a tournament of dive, and, and the counter dive just hasn't really been there, right? And uh, particularly yeah. against BLG, the team that I think plays that style Fake. exceptionally wow. well as, yeah, Faker's behind us, so Faker um, effect. Oh my obviously God. <laughs> uh, it's going to be very loud. I think that the Kench to me was the biggest difference maker today. In game one, it kind of blew up in the game, but in game two, it was really just devour usage and follow up on CC that made the difference. I see Dokla <laughs> might have to play him, you know, at some yeah, point. Yeah, I mean, there's so many T1 fans here. I Crazy. can't imagine what it's going to be like in Busan. Hey, but you yeah. got you got swarmed. Um, you walked off the desk uh, <laughs> after the last segment, and there were a lot yeah. of people wanting a photo. Yeah, yeah, I mean that's really, I mean that's really surprising because I didn't, I saw an energy jersey in the crowd. Yeah, I did every, not expect to see every that. energy jersey here lined up for a photo with those. Yeah. So it took a while. <laughs> yeah. yeah, There were so many. Hey, since we're stalling uh, in any case for the draw that is about to come, let's talk a little bit about NRG versus G2 because you didn't get to do that yet. And to look at some of the B 